ask you guys, what was your funniest or most memorable moment from filming? The you kids know, seeing the kids seeing Blue the Raptor was, was a big deal. That's good. Because we had there's an animat there were many animatronic dinosaurs that's that right. we got to work with. Um, but us bringing our own children onto set so that they could witness the splendor of these amazing animatronic, which is like a fancy word for puppet, mm -hmm. uh, these these really expensive robotic, half robotic, half human operated puppets. That was really great to see our kids just looking looking at these animals that for all intents and purposes were very real. Did you scare the kids? Yes, like... yes, yes we did. Unintentionally, <laughs> yeah. I thought for sure they'd know it was safe. And I was like, touch its teeth. He was like, no! <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. What's it like with bloopers when you're actually filming? Was there any moments where you couldn't stop laughing? With this one scene where Justice Smith, who plays the character of Franklin, gets like blood shot into <laughs> His face. That's right. And he's just hilarious, and that we just all lost it. That sequence was really funny. That was really hard. <laughs> not, not to. I had to like break. fully look away, just like yeah. fully. That's just... true. I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. And um, do you have to do that scene like trying to respray the blood in the face? Yes. You had to do it quite a few times. Yeah. yeah. We blew it a couple times. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I just have that little bit of it. It was all delightful. I, I got on the telephone with Colin Trevorrow, who directed the last one, wrote the last one, wrote this one, talking about what I could say, how best I could say it, what the scene was about, what we were trying to say, all that kind of stuff. And then on the set, you know, I had a good time trying to get it, give them everything they wanted, you know, everything that they could use, contribute a little bit. And my friend, uh, Fernando Treba, was uh, one of the extras. There were a couple of moments that we didn't tell him anything, and we knew that was all, all, all of us, even the actors knew that there was something coming, and it was a lot of fun. They didn't have many animatronics on set in the first Jurassic World, so I remember how excited they were the first time we were in front of the T-Rex, and they were so excited. They looked like kids, and that's exciting also for the director because you can capture all that energy in front of the camera. How much time gets spent into building wow. them, and how much input did you have in choosing them? There's so many people involved, from the guys from visual effects, uh, special effects, the animatronics, and of course uh, the production designer, the, the, the cinematographer, and the sound guys. It's such a big team effort. Uh, in order to portray that, but th th it delivers. You see the dinosaurs on screen and they look better than ever. I loved the, the time when I got to see J.A. interacting with all of the animatronics that, that were created for the film. And Bryce and Chris and Daniela, he would place them in a room with this absolutely lifelike animal. Uh, and surprise them and shock them with how real it was. And it would snap at them, and it would try to bite them, and its claws would come out, and they would react in real ways. And he's, he's very playful as a director, so getting to observe that uh, was, was a blast. The big scene where it's erupting volcano, and yes. you're in a tank? Yes. What was the reality like of what you're seeing? Is there real lava? Honestly, yes. It, there was, I mean, not real lava. <laughs> <laughs> Well, honestly, what? yes, there was real yes. lava. No, what, <laughs> we it, timed it just right. <laughs> <laughs> one, of these, um, one of the sequences were trapped in a bunker, and there's like lava pouring through the ceiling, and I just assumed that was going to be something that was, you know, done in post. And then all of a sudden, like all these, all these like firemen showed up, and they were dropping kitty litter, like lit kitty litter. It was lit on fire. That was lit on fire from the ceiling. And it was, it's, uh, so that, that, that was my, that was my real lava experience. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. A real fire experience. Did you have any kitty litter? No, I didn't have any lit kitty litter thrown at me uh, on this film. No, I didn't. <laughs> but, you know, going from that stuff to the underwater stuff, we did a lot of really exciting underwater work. And, and that was a lot of fun to do that. Really technical and, and complicated and combined two of my favorite things, which is, you know, scuba diving and making films. So we got to do a combination. And how long did you rehearse for? And how long did it take to shoot? We practiced, I think, starting like weeks in advance when yeah. we would go into that. We had essentially go through uh, all, the training. all the training for scuba diving lessons. The whole crew went to Hawaii and they were there at least a month, pretty much just shooting that section of the film. The underwater section was all at Pinewood in a tank. What you're seeing is real. That was one of the most uh, scary moments to shoot. Uh, when I, as a director, when I saw the actors inside the gyrosphere, that pistol ball sinking in the water with the actors inside, I, I was pretty scared watching that. In Hawaii, the volcano, how much of that is real? From the moment you had to recreate a volcano erupting, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of CGI involved. But we had a lot of real things in there. We had a lot of smoke involved. I mean, and they, of course, they had to run for days. You know, it was very exhausting physically for them.